Khyber Pakhtunkhwa abbreviated as KP or KPK, Urdu, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Pashto, Khyber Pistounwa is one of the four administrative provinces of Pakistan, located in the northwestern region of the country along the international border with Afghanistan. It was previously known as the Northwest Frontier Province (NWFP) until 2010 when the name was changed to Khyber Pakhtunkhwa by the 18th Amendment to Pakistan's constitution and is known colloquially by various other names. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is the third largest province of Pakistan by the size of both population and economy, though it is geographically the smallest of five. Within Pakistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa shares a border with Punjab, Baluchistan, Azad Kashmir, Gilgit Baltistan, and Islamabad. It comprises 10.5% of Pakistan's economy, and is home to 11.9% of Pakistan's total population, with the majority of the province's inhabitants being Pashtuns. The province is the site of the ancient kingdom Gandhara, including the ruins of its capital Pushkalavati near modern-day Charsada. Originally a stronghold of Buddhism, the history of the region was characterized by frequent invasions under various empires due to its geographical proximity to the Khyber Pass. Since the 9-11 attacks in the United States in 2001, the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has been a major theater of militancy and terrorism which intensified when the Taliban began an unsuccessful attempt to seize the control of the province in 2004. With the launch of Operation Zarb Eazb against the Taliban insurgency, the casualty and crime rates in the country as a whole dropped by 40.0% as compared to 2011-13, with even greater drops noted in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and the federally administered tribal areas. As of July 2014, about 929,859 people were reported to be internally displaced from North Waziristan to Khyber Pakhtunkhwa as a result of Operation Zarb Eazb. On March 2, 2017, the government of Pakistan considered a proposal to merge the federally administered tribal areas with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and to repeal the frontier crimes regulations, which are currently applicable to the tribal areas. However, some political parties have opposed the merger, and called for the tribal areas to instead become a separate province of Pakistan. On 24 May 2018, the National Assembly of Pakistan voted in favor of an amendment to the Constitution of Pakistan to merge the federally administered tribal areas with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. The Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Assembly then approved the historic FATA KP merger bill on 28 May 2018 making FATA officially part of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, which was then signed by President Mamnoon Hussain, completing the process of this historic merger. Etymology Khyber Pakhtunkhwa means the Khyber part of the land of the Pashtuns or Pakhtuns. While only the word Pakhtunkhwa means land of Pashtuns, and according to some scholars, it means Pashtun culture and society. When the British established it as a province, they called it Northwest Frontier Province, abbreviated as NWFP due to its relative location being in northwest of their Indian Empire. After the creation of Pakistan, Pakistan continued with this name but a Pashtun nationalist party, Awami National Party demanded that the province name be changed to Pakhtunkhwa. Their logic behind that demand was that Punjabi people, Sindhi people and Balochi people have their provinces named after their ethnicities but that is not the case for Pashtun people. Major political parties especially Pakistan Muslim League were against that name since it was too similar to Baka Khan's demand of separate nation of Pashtunistan. They wanted to name the province something other than which does not carry Pashtun identity in it as there were other minor ethnicities living in the province especially Hindkawans who spoke Hindko dialect of Punjabi language thus the word Khyber was introduced with the name because it is the name of a major pass which connects Pakistan to Afghanistan. History Early history During the times of Indus Valley Civilization 3300 BCE to 1300 BCE the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Khyber Pass, through Hindu Kush provided a route to other neighboring regions and was used by merchants on trade excursions. From 1500 BCE, Indo-Aryan peoples started to enter in the region of modern-day Iran, Pakistan, Afghanistan, North India after having passed Khyber Pass. 
The Gandharan civilization, which reached its zenith between the 6th and 1st centuries BCE, and which features prominently in the Hindu epic poem, the Mahabharata, had one of its cores over the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. The modern-day capital city of Peshawar was originally known in ancient times as Purushapura when the region was Hindu. Vedic texts refer to the area as the Janapada of Pushkalavati. The area was once known to be a great centre of learning. Greek and Persian invasions At around 516 BCE, Darius Hystaspes sent Silax, a Greek seaman from Carionda, to explore the course of the Indus River. Darius Hystaspes subsequently subdued the races dwelling west of the Indus and north of Kabul. Gandhara was incorporated into the Persian Empire as one of its far easternmost satrapy system of government. The satrapy of Gandhara is recorded to have sent troops for Xerxes' invasion of Greece in 480 BCE. In the spring of 327 BCE, Alexander the Great crossed the Indian Caucasus Hindu Kush and advanced to Nicaea, where Amphis, king of Taxila, and other chiefs joined him. Alexander then dispatched part of his force through the valley of the Kabul River, while he himself advanced into modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's Bajor and Swat regions with his troops. Having defeated the Aspasians, from whom he took 40,000 prisoners and 230,000 oxen, Alexander crossed the Goreos River and entered into the territory of the Asakanoi, also in modern-day Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Alexander then made Embalima thought to be the region of AMB in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa his base. The ancient region of Pukalayatis modern Hashtnagar, 17 miles 27 kilometers northwest of Peshawar submitted to the Greek invasion, leading to Nicanor, a Macedonian, being appointed satrap of the country west of the Indus, which includes the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province. <laughs> <laughs> Hindu and Buddhist rule After Alexander's death in 323 BCE Porus obtained possession of the region, but was murdered by Eudemus in 317 BCE. Eudemus then left the region, and with his departure Macedonian power collapsed. Sandrokatus the founder of the Mauryan dynasty, then declared himself master of the province. His grandson, Ashoka, made Buddhism the dominant religion in ancient Gandhara. After Ashoka's death the Mauryan Empire collapsed, just as in the west the Seleucid power was rising. The Greek princes of neighboring Bactria in modern Afghanistan took advantage of the power vacuum to declare their independence. The Bactrian kingdoms were then attacked from the west by the Parthians and from the north about 139 BCE by the Sakas, a Central Asian tribe. Local Greek rulers still exercised a feeble and precarious power along the borderland, but the last vestige of Greek dominion was extinguished by the arrival of the Ukai. The Ukai were a race of nomads that were themselves forced southwards out of Central Asia by the nomadic Xiongnu people. The Kushan clan of the Ukai seized vast swathes of territory under the rule of Kujula Kadphises. His successors, Vima Takto and Vima Kadphises, conquered the northwestern portion of the Indian subcontinent. Vima Kadphises was then succeeded by his son, the legendary Hindu king Kanishka, who himself was succeeded by Huvishka, and Vasudeva I. <laughs> Early Islamic invasions After the Seferids had left in Kabul, the Hindu Shahis had once again been placed into power. The restored Hindu Shahi kingdom was founded by the Brahmin minister Kalar in 843 CE. Kalar had moved the capital into Uttabandapura in modern day Khyber Pakhtunkhwa from Kabul. Trade had flourished and many gems, textiles, perfumes, and other goods had been exported west. Coins minted by the Shahis have been found all over the Indian subcontinent. The Shahis had built Hindu temples with many idols, all of which were later looted by invaders. The ruins of these temples can be found at Nandana, Malat, Siv Ganga, and Kedas, as well as across the west bank of the Indus River. At its height, King Jayapala, the rule of the Shahi kingdom, had extended to Kabul from the west, Bajor to the north, Multan to the south, and the present day India Pakistan border to the east. Jayapala saw a danger from the rise to power of the Ghaznavids and invaded their capital city of Ghazni both in the reign of Sebuktijan and in that of his son Mahmud. This had initiated the Muslim Ghaznavid and Hindu Shahi struggles. Sebuktijan, however, defeated him, and forced Jayapala to pay an indemnity. 
Eventually, Jayapala refused payment and took to war once more. The Shahis were decisively defeated by Mahmud of Ghazni after the defeat of Jayapala at the Battle of Peshawar on November 27, 1001. Over time, Mahmud of Ghazni had pushed further into the subcontinent, as far as east as modern-day Agra. During his campaigns, many Hindu temples and Buddhist monasteries had been looted and destroyed, as well as many people being forcibly converted into Islam. Following the collapse of Ghaznavid rule, local Pashtuns of the Delhi Sultanate controlled the region. Several Turkic and Pashtun dynasties ruled from Delhi, having shifted their capital from Lahore to Delhi. Several Muslim dynasties ruled modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa during the Delhi Sultanate period, the Mamluk dynasty 1206 the Khalji dynasty 1290 the Tughlaq dynasty 1320 the Sayyid dynasty 1414 and the Lodi dynasty 1451 Yusufzai Pashtun tribes from the Kabul and Jalalabad valleys began migrating to the valley of Peshawar beginning in the 15th century, and displaced the Dalazak Pashtun tribes across the Indus River. <laughs> Mughal Mughal suzerainty over the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region was partially established after Babar, the founder of the Mughal Empire, invaded the region in 1505 CE via the Khyber Pass. The Mughal Empire noted the importance of the region as a weak point in their empire's defences, and determined to hold Peshawar and Kabul at all cost against any threats from the Uzbek Shaybanids. He was forced to retreat westwards to Kabul, but returned to defeat the Lodais in July 1526, when he captured Peshawar from Daulat Khan Lodai, though the region was never considered to be fully subjugated to the Mughals. Under the reign of Babar's son, Humayun, direct Mughal rule was briefly challenged with the rise of the Pashtun emperor, Sher Shah Suri who began construction of the famous Grand Trunk Road, which links Kabul, Afghanistan with Chittagong, Bangladesh over 2,000 miles to the east. Later, local rulers once again pledged loyalty to the Mughal emperor. Yusufzai tribes rose against Mughals during the Yusufzai Revolt of 1667, and engaged in pitched battles with Mughal battalions in Peshawar and Atak. Afridi tribes resisted Aurangzeb rule during the Afridi Revolt of the 1670s. The Afridis massacred a Mughal battalion in the Khyber Pass in 1672 and shut the pass to lucrative trade routes. Following another massacre in the winter of 1673, Mughal armies led by Emperor Aurangzeb himself regained control of the entire area in 1674, and enticed tribal leaders with various awards in order to end the rebellion, referred to as the father of Pashto literature. And hailing from the city of Akora Khatak, the warrior poet Kushal Khan Khatak actively participated in revolt against the Mughals and became renowned for his poems that celebrated the rebellious Pashtun warriors. <laughs> Afsharid On 18 November 1738, Peshawar was captured from the Mughal governor Nawab Nasir Khan by the Afsharid armies during the Persian invasion of the Mughal Empire under Nader Shah. <laughs> Durrani Afghans The area fell subsequently under the rule of Ahmed Shah Durrani, founder of the Afghan Durrani Empire, following a grand nine-day-long assembly of leaders, known as the Loya Jirga. Their rule was interrupted by a brief invasion of the Hindu Marathas, ruled over the region following the 1758 Battle of Peshawar for 11 months till early 1759 when the Durrani rule was re-established. Under the reign of Timur Shah, the Mughal practice of using Kabul as a summer capital and Peshawar as a winter capital was reintroduced. Peshawar's Bala Hisar Fort served as the residence of Durrani kings during their winter stay in Peshawar. Mahmud Shah Durrani, became king, and quickly sought to seize Peshawar from his half-brother, Shah Shuja Durrani. Shah Shuja was then himself proclaimed king in 1803, and recaptured Peshawar while Mahmud Shah was imprisoned at Bala Hisar Fort until his eventual escape. In 1809, the British sent an emissary to the court of Shah Shuja in Peshawar, marking the first diplomatic meeting between the British and Afghans. Mahmud Shah allied himself with the Barakzai Pashtuns, and amassed an army in 1809, and captured Peshawar from his half-brother, Shah Shuja, establishing Mahmud Shah's second reign, which lasted under 1818. 
Topic Sikh. Ranjit Singh invaded Peshawar in 1818 and captured it from the Afghan Empire. The Sikh Empire based in Lahore did not immediately secure direct control of the Peshawar region, but rather paid nominal tribute to Jahandad Khan of Khadak, who was nominated by Ranjit Singh to be ruler of the region. After Ranjit Singh's departure from the region, Khadak's rule was undermined and power seized by Yar Muhammad Khan. In 1823, Ranjit Singh returned to capture Peshawar, and was met by the armies of Azim Khan at Noshera. Following the Sikh victory at the Battle of Noshera, Ranjit Singh recaptured Peshawar. Rather than reappointing Jahandad Khan of Khadak, Ranjit Singh selected Yar Muhammad Khan to once again rule the region. The Sikh Empire annexed the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region following advances from the armies of Hari Singh Nalwa. An 1835 attempt by Dust Muhammad Khan to reoccupy Peshawar failed when his army declined to engage in combat with the Dal Khalsa. Dust Muhammad Khan's son, Muhammad Akbar Khan engaged with Sikh forces the Battle of Jamrud of 1837, resulting in the death of Hari Singh Nalwa. During Sikh rule, an Italian named Paolo Avitabal was appointed administrator of Peshawar, and is remembered for having unleashed a reign of fear there. The city's famous Mahabat Khan, built in 1630 in the Jewelers' Bazaar, was badly damaged and desecrated by the Sikh conquerors. Sikh settlers from Punjab were settled in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region. AMB Tanawal was only princely state that is free from the influence of Sikhs, and ruled by Tanolis. Peshawar's only remaining gurdwaras were built by Hari Singh Nalwa to accommodate the newly settled Sikhs. The Sikhs also rebuilt the Bala Hisar fort during their occupation of the Peshawar. Topic. British Raj British East India Company defeated the Sikhs during the Second Anglo-Sikh War in 1849, and incorporated small parts of the region into the province of Punjab. While Peshawar was the site of a small mutiny against British during the Indian Rebellion of 1857, local Pashtun tribes throughout the region generally remained neutral and supportive of the British as they detested the Sikhs, in contrast to other parts of British India which rose up in revolt against the British. However, British control of parts of the region was routinely challenged by Wazir tribesmen in Waziristan and other Pashtun tribes, who resisted any foreign occupation until Pakistan was created. By the late 19th century, the official boundaries of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region still had not been defined as the region was still claimed by the Kingdom of Afghanistan. It was only in 1893 the British demarcated the boundary with Afghanistan under a treaty agreed to by the Afghan king, Abdur Rahman Khan, following the Second Anglo-Afghan War. Several princely states within the boundaries of the region were allowed to maintain their autonomy under the terms of maintaining friendly ties with the British. As the British war effort during World War I demanded the reallocation of resources from British India to the European war fronts, some tribesmen from Afghanistan crossed the Durand Line in 1917 to attack British posts in an attempt to gain territory and weaken the legitimacy of the border. The validity of the Durand Line, however, was reaffirmed in 1919 by the Afghan government with the signing of the Treaty of Rawalpindi, which ended the Third Anglo-Afghan War, a war in which Waziri tribesmen allied themselves with the forces of Afghanistan's King Amanullah in their resistance to British rule. The Wazirs and other tribes, taking advantage of instability on the frontier, continued to resist British occupation until 1920 even after Afghanistan had signed a peace treaty with the British. British campaigns to subdue tribesmen along the Durand Line, as well as three Anglo-Afghan wars, made travel between Afghanistan and the densely populated heartlands of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa increasingly difficult. The two regions were largely isolated from one another from the start of the Second Anglo-Afghan War in 1878 until the start of World War II in 1939 when conflict along the Afghan frontier largely dissipated. Concurrently, the British continued their large public works projects in the region, and extended the Great Indian Peninsula Railway into the region, which connected the modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region to the plains of India to the east. Other projects, such as the Atak Bridge, Islamia College University, Khyber Railway, and establishment of cantonments in Peshawar, Kohat, Mardin, and Noshera further cemented British rule in the region. In 1901, the British carved out the northwest portions of Punjab province to create the Northwest Frontier Province NWFP, which was renamed Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in 2010. 
During the independence period there was a Congress-led ministry in the province, which was led by secular Pashtun leaders, including Baka Khan, who preferred joining India instead of Pakistan. The secular Pashtun leadership was also of the view that if joining India was not an option then they should espouse the cause of an independent ethnic Pashtun state rather than Pakistan. The secular stance of Baka Khan had driven a wedge between the ulama of the otherwise pro-Congress and pro-Indian unity Jamiat Alema Hind Juh and Baka Khan's Kudai Kedmatgars. The directives of the ulama in the province began to take on communal tones. The ulama saw the Hindus in the province as a threat to Muslims. Accusations of molesting Muslim women were leveled at Hindu shopkeepers in Noshera, a town where anti-Hindu sermons were delivered by Malvis. Tensions also rose in 1936 over the abduction of a Hindu girl in Banu. British Indian court ruled against the marriage of a Hindu converted Muslim girl at Banu, after the girl's family filed case of abduction and forced conversion. The ruling was based on the fact that the girl was a minor and was asked to make her decision of conversion and marriage after she reaches the age of majority, till then she was asked to live with a third party. The verdict enraged the Muslims, especially the Pashtun tribesmen. The Dewar Maliks and Mullahs left the Tochi far the Kaisora Valley to the south to rouse the Torikal Wazir. The enraged tribesmen mustered two large Lashkas 10,000 strong and battled the Banu Brigade, with heavy casualties on both sides. Widespread lawlessness erupted as tribesmen blocked roads, overran outposts and ambushed convoys. The British retaliated by sending two columns converging in the Kaisora River Valley. They suppressed the agitation by imposing fines and by destroying the houses of the ringleaders, including that of Haji Mirzali Khan Fakir of IPI. However, the Pyrrhic nature of the victory and the subsequent withdrawal of the troops was credited by the wazirs to be a manifestation of the power of Mirzali Khan. He succeeded in inducing a semblance of tribal unity, as the British noticed with dismay, among various sections of Tori Kel wazirs, the Mossad and the Betani. He cemented his position as religious leader by declaring a jihad against the British. This move also helped rally support from Pashtun tribesmen across the border. Such controversies stirred up anti-Hindu sentiments amongst the province's Muslim population. By 1947 the majority of the ulama in the province began supporting the Muslim League's idea of Pakistan. Banu Resolution. In June 1947, Mirzali Khan of IPI, Baka Khan, and other Kudai Kedmatgars declared the Banu Resolution, demanding that the Pashtuns be given a choice to have an independent state of Pashtunistan composing all Pashtun-majority territories of British India, instead of being made to join the new state of Pakistan. However, the British Raj refused to comply with the demand of this resolution. Immediately prior to the creation of Pakistan in 1947, the British held a referendum in the NWFP to allow voters to choose between joining Pakistan or India. The referendum was held on the 2nd of July 1947, while polling began on the 6th of July 1947, and the referendum results were made public on the 20th of July 1947. According to the official results, there were 572,798 registered voters, out of which 289,244 .02 votes were cast in favor of Pakistan, while only 2,874 were cast in favor of India. According to an estimate, the total turnout for the referendum was only 15% less than the total turnout in the 1946 elections. At the same time, a large number of Kudai Kedmatgar supporters boycotted the referendum, and intimidation against Hindu and Sikh voters by supporters of the Pakistan movement was also reported. Baka Khan pledged allegiance to the new state of Pakistan in 1947, and thereafter abandoned his goals of an independent Pashtunistan and a united India, in favor of supporting increased autonomy for the NWFP under Pakistani rule. He was subsequently arrested by Pakistan several times for his opposition to strong centralized rule. On the other hand, Mirzali Khan and his followers refused to recognize Pakistan, and launched a campaign against Pakistan. They continued their guerrilla warfare against the new nation's government. In 1950, they announced the creation of Pashtunistan as an independent nation. A Pashtun tribal jirga, held in Razmak, Waziristan, appointed Mirzali Khan as the president of the National Assembly for Pashtunistan. 
He didn't surrender to the government of Pakistan throughout his life. However, his popularity among the people of Waziristan declined over the years. He died a natural death in 1960 in Gerwik, Waziristan, as the region came under British control, as had been agreed to by the Afghan government following the British victory over Afghanistan in the Second Anglo-Afghan War and after the treaty ending Third Anglo-Afghan War, no option was available to cede the territory to the rule of the Afghan king even though Afghanistan continued to claim the entire region as it was part of the Durrani Empire prior to the conquest of the region by the Sikhs in 1818. By 1947 Pashtun nationalists were advocating for a united India, and no prominent voices advocated for a union with Afghanistan. All the princely states within the boundaries of the NWFP were allowed to maintain certain autonomy, but in 1970s most of the princely states were merged completely into Pakistan. After the creation of Pakistan After the creation of Pakistan in 1947, Afghanistan was the sole member of the United Nations to vote against Pakistan's accession to the UN because of Kabul's claim to the Pashtun territories on the Pakistani side of the Durand Line. Afghanistan's Loya Jirga of 1949 declared the Durand Line invalid, which led to border tensions with Pakistan, and decades of mistrust between the two states. Afghan governments have also periodically refused to recognize Pakistan's inheritance of British treaties regarding the region. During the 1950s, Afghanistan supported the secessionist Pashtunistan movement. As a result of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, over 5 million Afghan refugees poured into Pakistan, mostly choosing to reside in the NWFP as of 2007, nearly 3 million remained. The northwest frontier province became a base for the Afghan resistance fighters and the Diobandi ulama of the province played a significant role in the Afghan jihad, with Madrasa Haqqaniya becoming a prominent organizational and networking base for the anti-Soviet Afghan fighters. The province remained heavily influenced by events in Afghanistan thereafter. The 1989-1992 civil war in Afghanistan following the withdrawal of Soviet forces led to the rise of the Afghan Taliban, which had emerged in the border region between Afghanistan, Balochistan, and Fatah as a formidable political force. In 2010 the province was renamed, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Protests arose among the local Hinkawan, Chitrali, Kohistani and Kalash populations over the name change, as they began to demand their own provinces. The Hindkawans, Kohistanis and Chitralis are last remains of ancient Gandhari people and they jointly protested for preservation of their culture. Seven people were killed and 100 injured in protests on of April 2011. The Awami National Party sought to rename the province, Pakhtunkhwa, which translates to, Land of Pashtuns, in the Pashto language. The name change was largely opposed by non-Pashtuns, and by political parties such as the Pakistan Muslim League N, who draw much of their support from non-Pashtun regions of the province, and by the Islamist Mudahida Majlis e Amal coalition. War and militancy Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has been a site of militancy and terrorism that started after the attacks of September 11, 2001, and intensified when the Pakistani Taliban began an attempt to seize power in Pakistan starting in 2004. Armed conflict began in 2004, when tensions, rooted in the Pakistan Army's search for al-Qaeda fighters in Pakistan's mountainous Waziristan area in the federally administered tribal areas, escalated into armed resistance. Fighting is ongoing between the Pakistani Army and armed militant groups such as the turek i taliban pakistan TTP, Jundala, Lashkar-e-Islam tariq e nafaz e shariat e mohammadi TNSM, Al-Qaeda, and elements of organized crime have led to the death of over 50,000 Pakistanis since the country joined the U.S.-led war on terror, with Khyber Pakhtunkhwa being the site of most of the conflict. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is also the main theater for Pakistan's zarb e azb operation, a broad military campaign against militants located in the province, and neighboring Fatah. By 2014, casualty rates in the country as a whole dropped by 40% as compared to 2011 to 2013, with even greater drops noted in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, despite the province being the site of a large massacre of schoolchildren by terrorists in December 2014. <laughs> 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 
Topic: Geography. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa sits primarily on the Iranian plateau and comprises the junction where the slopes of the Hindu Kush mountains on the Eurasian plate give way to the Indus watered hills approaching South Asia. This situation has led to seismic activity in the past. The famous Khyber Pass links the province to Afghanistan, while the Kohala Bridge in Circle Bakot Abbottabad is a major crossing point over the Jhelum River in the east. Geographically the province could be divided into two zones, the northern one extending from the ranges of the Hindu Kush to the borders of Peshawar Basin and the southern one extending from Peshawar to the Darajat Basin. The northern zone is cold and snowy in winters with heavy rainfall and pleasant summers with the exception of Peshawar Basin, which is hot in summer and cold in winter. It has moderate rainfall. The southern zone is arid with hot summers and relatively cold winters and scanty rainfall. The Sheikh Buddin Hills, a spur of clay and sandstone hills that stretch east from the Sulayman Mountains to the Indus River, separates Dara Ismail Khan district from the Marwat plains of the Laki Marwat. The highest peak in the range is the limestone Sheikh Buddin Mountain, which is protected by the Sheikh Buddin National Park. Near the Indus River terminus of the Sheikh Buddin Hills is a spur of limestone hills known as the Kafirkot Hills, where the ancient Hindu complex of Kafirkot is located. The major rivers that crisscross the province are the Kabul, Swat, Chitral, Kuna, Saran, Panjkora, Bara, Kuram, Dor, Haru, Gomal, and Zhob. Its snow-capped peaks and lush green valleys of unusual beauty have enormous potential for tourism. Topic: <inaudible> Climate. The climate of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa varies immensely for a region of its size, encompassing most of the many climate types found in Pakistan. The province stretching southwards from the Baraghil Pass in the Hindu Kush covers almost 6 degrees of latitude, it is mainly a mountainous region. Dara Ismail Khan is one of the hottest places in South Asia while in the mountains to the north the weather is mild in the summer and intensely cold in the winter. The air is generally very dry, consequently, the daily and annual range of temperature is quite large, rainfall also varies widely. Although large parts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are typically dry, the province also contains the wettest parts of Pakistan in its eastern fringe especially in monsoon season from mid-June to mid-September. <laughs> Chitral district Chitral district lies completely sheltered from the monsoon that controls the weather in eastern Pakistan, owing to its relatively westerly location and the shielding effect of the Nanga Parbat Massif. In many ways Chitral district has more in common regarding climate with Central Asia than South Asia. The winters are generally cold even in the valleys, and heavy snow during the winter blocks passes and isolates the region. In the valleys, however, summers can be hotter than on the windward side of the mountains due to lower cloud cover. Chitral can reach 40 degrees Celsius (104 degrees Fahrenheit) frequently during this period. However, the humidity is extremely low during these hot spells and as a result the summer climate is less torrid than in the rest of the Indian subcontinent. Most precipitation falls as thunderstorms or snow during winter and spring, so that the climate at the lowest elevations is classed as Mediterranean CSA, Continental Mediterranean DSA, or Semi-arid Summers are extremely dry in the north of Chitral district and receive only a little rain in the south around Drash. At elevations above 5,000 meters (16,400 feet), as much as a third of the snow which feeds the large Karakoram and Hindukish glaciers comes from the monsoon, since these elevations are too high to be shielded from its moisture. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Central Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. On the southern flanks of Nanga Parbat and in upper and lower DIR districts, rainfall is much heavier than further north because moist winds from the Arabian Sea are able to penetrate the region. When they collide with the mountain slopes, winter depressions provide heavy precipitation. The monsoon, although short, is generally powerful. As a result, the southern slopes of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are the wettest part of Pakistan. Annual rainfall ranges from around 500 mm in, in the most sheltered areas to as much as 1,750 mm in, in parts of Abbottabad and Mansara districts. 
This region's climate is classed at lower elevations as humid subtropical CFA in the west, CWA in the east, whilst at higher elevations with a southerly aspect it becomes classed as humid continental DFB. However, accurate data for altitudes above 2000 meters, 6560 feet are practically non-existent here in Chitral or in the south of the province. The seasonality of rainfall in central Khyber Pakhtunkhwa shows very marked gradients from east to west. At DIR, March remains the wettest month due to frequent frontal cloud bands, whereas in Hazara more than half the rainfall comes from the monsoon. This creates a unique situation characterized by a bimodal rainfall regime, which extends into the southern part of the province described below, since cold air from the Siberian high loses its chilling capacity upon crossing the vast Karakoram and Himalaya ranges. Winters in central Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are somewhat milder than in Chitral. Snow remains very frequent at high altitudes but rarely lasts long on the ground in the major towns and agricultural valleys. Outside of winter, temperatures in central Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are not so hot as in Chitral. Significantly higher humidity when the monsoon is active means that heat discomfort can be greater. However, even during the most humid periods the high altitudes typically allow for some relief from the heat overnight. Southern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa As one moves further away from the foothills of the Himalaya and Karakoram ranges, the climate changes from the humid subtropical climate of the foothills to the typically arid climate of Sindh, Baluchistan and southern Punjab. As in central Pakhtunkhwa, the seasonality of precipitation shows a very sharp gradient from west to east, but the whole region very rarely receives significant monsoon rainfall. Even at high elevations annual rainfall is less than 400 mm and in some places as little as 200 mm Temperatures in southern Pakhtunkhwa are extremely hot. Dara Ismail Khan in the southernmost district of the province is known as one of the hottest places in the world with temperatures known to have reached 50 degrees Celsius in the cooler months, nights can be cold and frosts remain frequent, snow is very rare, and daytime temperatures remain comfortably warm with abundant sunshine. National parks There are about 29 national parks in Pakistan and about 18 in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Population The province has an estimated population of about 27.5 million, according to 2011 estimates, that is an increase of 51.6% over 1998 figures, ranking Khyber Pakhtunkhwa over Islamabad, Punjab and Azad Kashmir in population gains during that period. The largest ethnic group is the Pashtun, who historically have been living in the areas for centuries. Around 1.5 million Afghan refugees also remain in the province, the majority of whom are Pashtuns followed by Tajiks, Hazaras, and other smaller groups. Despite having lived in the province for over two decades, they are registered as citizens of Afghanistan. The Pashtuns of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa observe tribal code of conduct called Pakhtunwali, which has four high value components called Nong, honor, Badal, revenge, Melmastia, hospitality, and Nanawada, rights to refuge. According to the 1998 census, the population of the province was approximately 17 and three quarters million, of whom 52% are males and 48% are females. Topic: Languages. Urdu, being the national and official language, serves as a lingua franca for inter-ethnic communications, and sometimes Pashto and Urdu are the second and third languages among communities which speak other ethnic languages. Pashto is spoken more than three fourths of the population after Fata merger. English is co-official and also used in education, while Arabic is used for religious purposes and education. In 2011 the provincial government approved in principle the introduction of the five regional languages of Pashto, Hinko, Saraiki, Kohar and Kohistani as compulsory subjects for the schools in the areas where they are spoken. There is some population in Peshawar city who speak Persian since 19th century, this population saw an increase during 1980s and 1990s due to migration from Afghanistan. <laughs> 
Topic: <inaudible> Religion. The majority of the residents of the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa overwhelmingly follows and professes the Sunni principles of Islam, while the small followers of Shia principles of Islam are found among in the Ismailis in the Chitral district. The tribe of Kalasha in southern Chitral still retain their ancient Greco-animist, shamanist religion. There are very small numbers of residents are the adherents of Roman Catholicism sect of Christianity, Hinduism and the Sikhism. <laughs> <laughs> Government and politics Political leanings and the legislative branch the Provincial Assembly is an unicameral legislature, which consists of 124 members elected to serve for a constitutionally bounded term of five years. Historically, the province perceived to be a stronghold of the ANP a pro-Russian, a pro-communist, left-wing and nationalist party. Since 1970s, the Pakistan People's Party PPP also enjoyed considerable support in the province due to its socialist agenda. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa was thought to be another leftist region of the country after Sindh. After the nationwide general elections held in 2002, a plurality voting swing in the province elected one of Pakistan's only religiously based provincial governments led by ultra conservative MMA during the administration of President Pervez Musharraf. The American involvement in neighboring Afghanistan contributed towards the electoral victory of the Islamic coalition led by JEI whose social policies made the province a ground swell of anti-Americanism. The electoral victory of MMA was also in context of guided democracy in Musharraf administration that barred the mainstream political parties, the leftist Pakistan People's Party and the center-right PML -N, whose chairman and presidents having been barred from participation in the elections, policy enforcement of a range of social restrictions, though the implementation of strict sharia was introduced by the MMA government but the law was never fully enacted due to objections of governor backed by the Musharraf administration. Restrictions on public musical performances were introduced, as well as a ban prohibiting music to be played in public places as part of the Prohibition of Dancing and Music Bill, 2005, which led to the creation of a thriving underground music scene in Peshawar. The Islamist government also attempted to enforce compulsory hijab on women, and wished to enforce gender segregation in the province's educational institutions. The coalition further tried to prohibit male doctors from performing ultrasounds on women, and tried to close the province's cinemas. In 2005, the coalition successfully passed the Prohibition of Use of Women in Photograph Bill, 2005, leading to the removal of all public advertisements that featured women. In the height of far right insurgency in the country, the religious coalition lost its grip in the general elections held in 2008, and the religious coalition was swept out of power by the leftist Awami National Party, which also witnessed the resignation of President Musharraf in 2008. The ANP government eventually led the initiatives to repeal the major Islamist social programs, with the backing of the federal government led by PPP in Islamabad. Public disapproval of ANP's leftist program integrated in civil administration with the sounded allegations of corruption as well as popular opposition against religious program promoted by the MMA swiftly shifted the province's leniency towards the right-wing spectrum led by the PTI in 2012. In 2013, the provincial politics shifted towards the right wing national conservatism when the PTI led by Imran Khan was able to form the minority government in coalition with the JEI. The province now serves as the stronghold of the rightist PTI and is perceived as right wing spectrum of the country. In non Pashtun areas, such as Atak, Abbottabad, and Hazara district, the PML, -N, the center right party, enjoys considerable public support over economical and public policy issues and has a substantial vote. Bank. Executive branch The executive branch of the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is led by the chief minister elected by the popular votes in the provincial assembly while the governor, a ceremonial figure representing the federal government in Islamabad, is appointed from the necessary advice of the Prime Minister of Pakistan by the President of Pakistan. The provincial cabinet is then appointed by the chief minister who takes oath of office from the governor. In matters of civil administration, the chief secretary assists the chief minister on executing its right to ensure the writ of the government and the constitution. Judicial branch The Peshawar High Court is the province's highest court of law whose judges are appointed by the approval of the Supreme Judicial Council in Islamabad, interpreting the laws and overturn those they find unconstitutional. <laughs> <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Administrative divisions and districts. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa is divided into seven divisions Banu, Dara Ismail Khan, Hazara, Kohat, Malakland, Mardin, and Peshawar, plus seven agencies of Fada, which are now part of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, each under an appointed commissioner. The divisions were abolished in 2000, but were restored after the 2008 election. The divisions are subdivided into 26 districts, comprising 21 settled area districts and five provincially administered tribal area districts. The administration of the Pata districts is vested in the President of Pakistan and the Governor of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, by Articles 246 and 247 of the Constitution of Pakistan but after Fata KP merger, the administration of both Pata and Fata is transferred to Khyber Pakhtunkhwa government. The 34 districts are <laughs> Major cities Peshawar is the capital and largest city of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The city is the most populous and comprises more than one-eighth of the province's population and Banu Na35 is the largest NA seat of the province. Economy Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has the third largest provincial economy in Pakistan. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa's share of Pakistan's GDP has historically comprised 10.5%, although the province accounts for 11.9% of Pakistan's total population. The part of the economy that Khyber Pakhtunkhwa dominates is forestry, where its share has historically ranged from a low of 34.9% to a high of 81%, giving an average of 61.56%. Currently, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa accounts for 10% of Pakistan's GDP, 20% of Pakistan's mining output and, since 1972, it has seen its economy grow in size by 3.6 times, after suffering for decades due to the fallout of the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Today they are again being targeted for a different situation of terrorism. Agriculture remains important and the main cash crops include wheat, maize, tobacco in Swabi, rice, sugar beets, as well as fruits are grown in the province. Some manufacturing and high-tech investments in Peshawar has helped improve job prospects for many locals, while trade in the province involves nearly every product. The bazaars in the province are renowned throughout Pakistan. Unemployment has been reduced due to establishment of industrial zones. Workshops throughout the province support the manufacture of small arms and weapons. The province accounts for at least 78% of the marble production in Pakistan. Infrastructure The Sharmay Hydropower Project is a proposed power generation project located in Upper Dir district of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa on the Panjkora River with an installed capacity of 150 MW. The project feasibility study was carried out by Japanese consulting company Nippon Koei. Social issues The Awami National Party sought to rename the province, Pakhtunkhwa, which translates to, Land of Pakhtuns, in the Pashto language. This was opposed by some of the non-Pashtuns, and especially by parties such as the Pakistan Muslim League N and Mudahida Majlis e Amal The PMLN derives its support in the province from primarily non-Pashtun Hazara regions. In 2010 the announcement that the province would have a new name led to a wave of protests in the Hazara region. On 15 April 2010 Pakistan's Senate officially named the province, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, with 80 senators in favor and 12 opposed. The MMA, who until the elections of 2008 had a majority in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa government, had proposed, Afghania. As a compromise name, after the 2008 general election, the Awami National Party formed a coalition provincial government with the Pakistan People's Party. The Awami National Party has its strongholds in the Pashtun areas of Pakistan, particularly in the Peshawar Valley, while Karachi in Sindh has one of the largest Pashtun populations in the world—around 7 million by some estimates. In the 2008 election the ANP won two Sindh assembly seats in Karachi. The Awami National Parbeen instrumental in fighting the Taliban. 
In the 2013 general election Pakistan Tariq e Insaf won a majority in the provincial assembly and has now formed their government in coalition with Jamaat e Islami Pakistan. Non-government organizations The following is a list of some of the major NGOs working in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, al Khidmat Foundation Orat Foundation Shakat Kanam Memorial Cancer Hospital and Research Center Sarhad Rural Support Program Human Rights Commission of Pakistan Folk music and culture Hindko and Pashto folk music are popular in Pakhtunkhwa and have a rich tradition going back hundreds of years. The main instruments are the rhubarb, manji and harmonium. Kaur folk music is popular in Chitral and northern Swat. The tunes of Kaur music are very different from those of Pashto, and the main instrument is the Chitrali sitar. A form of band music composed of clarinets and drums is popular in Chitral. It is played at polo matches and dances. The same form of band music is played in the neighboring northern areas. Education Sources – This is a chart of the education market of Pakhtunkhwa estimated by the government in 1998. Major educational establishments Abbottabad Public School, Abbottabad University of Haripur, Haripur Army Burn Hall College, Abbottabad Cadet College Kohat, Kohat Edwardus College, Peshawar Abdul Wali Khan University Mardin, Mardin Baka Khan Medical College, Mardin Ghulam Isak Khan Institute of Engineering Sciences and Technology, Swabi Gomal University, Dara Ismail Khan Islamia College University, Peshawar Khyber Medical University, Peshawar Ayub Medical College, Abbottabad Abbottabad University of Science and Technology, Abbottabad University of Agriculture, Peshawar University of Engineering and Technology, Peshawar University of Malakland, Chakdara University of Peshawar, Peshawar University of Hazara, Mansara University of Swat, Swat University of Swabi, Swabi University of Science and Technology, Banu Sports Cricket is the main sport played in Pakhtunkhwa. It has produced world-class sportsmen like Shahid Afridi, Yunus Khan, Thakar Zaman and Umar Ghul. Besides producing cricket players, Pakhtunkhwa has the honor of being the birthplace of many world-class squash players, including greats like Hashim Khan, Kamar Zaman, Jahangir Khan and Janshir Khan. See also Khyber Pakhtunkhwa portal <laughs>